Three weeks after attempting to resign as Prime Minister, Sa'ad Hariri is back in Beirut to try and prevent the political turmoil from spiraling out of control. I will stay with you and we'll continue to march together. We'll stay together to be Lebanon's first defense line. We'll defend Lebanon's stability and Arabism. While Hariri and his government go into damage control mode, his empire in the business sphere is beginning to crumble. These migrants are among thousands of laborers affected by the collapse of construction giant Saudi Ozer. Many were laid off suddenly and are still waiting for their wages to be paid. Despite being based in Riyadh, Saudi Ozer was founded in 1978 by former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri, Saad's father. Backed by the Saudi royal family, the company's golden years boasted grand projects like the 492-room Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Riyadh. But the oil price collapse in 2014 led to spending cuts, which could signal the end for Hariri's business empire. Oja's downfall has been swift. The value of its contracts from construction projects plunged from almost $9 billion in 2014 to around $850 million this year. It ended operations in July, after almost 40 years in the business. It still owes Saudi banks billions of dollars in debt. Most of its assets have reportedly been transferred, but it's been forced to abandon several big projects. They include a 15-year maintenance contract on the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology and the Saudi King's Palace in Tangier. While there have been reports of Hariri trying to reach a deal to sell Saudi Ozer to the Saudi government, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has hinted that he's willing to let Ozer fail. In an interview with Bloomberg, he said he was prepared to honour state commitments to Ozer, but worker wages and compensation to contractors are their own problem. Saudi watchers say the company that once enjoyed the status of the country's top builder is one of the victims of the prince's big vision to diversify the economy and wean it off oil revenues. Now, stripped of its privileged relationship with the royal family and a massive debt looming, Saudi Ozer and the Hariri Empire might not need a big blow to crumble. Laila Humaira, TRT World. Let's bring in our editor at large, Craig Peters, joining us from a damp looking Paris there. Craig, welcome to the show. You've reported extensively on Hariri's business empire. Just how bad a shape is it in? Oh, it's, it, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, our reporting and contacts within the family, French government and, and uh, others in the construction industry, he, he owes the Saudis uh, $9 billion. He's into the French government for uh, a, a mere uh, 5 million euros, but he has 15 million euros of outstanding uh, salaries he has to pay here in France. You remember, uh, Hariri was the darling of former King Fahd and King Abdullah. Uh, they backed him to the hilt uh, at one point, uh, funneling more than a billion dollars in, into his construction firm. But that's over, uh, that's over and done with now because the... What happened was is the Saudis ordered him to quit because he is a Saudi citizen. Uh, and uh, it was only after the French intervened uh, uh, with the young princeling uh, that Hariri was allowed to go back to Craig, Lebanon. Right. Craig, That's how the much, story we're being told here. Right. How much of a factor uh, has the fall in oil prices been in all of this? Uh, Nothing whatsoever plays plays no no role in the Hariri Empire. Uh, his his business empire is is global. Uh, uh, in Lebanon, for instance, all he owns is uh, he owns a bank, Bank Med. He's very big in fiber optics and telecoms. And uh, whenever his banks and insurance companies get into problems in Lebanon, the central bank comes in to help prop up the company. Mm. Now. Uh what, what kind of impact is uh, the collapse of uh, this business empire going to have on his ability to lead Lebanon? Um, he still should be able to lead it because he has a lot of assets in Lebanon that actually make some money, as I said, particularly fiber optics, telecoms. He's also a major shareholder, believe it or not, in Turkish telecom. 
um, which is a, a pretty big deal. Uh, his business empire is, is scattered abroad. You know, at one point, he had over, uh, what was it, let me make sure, yeah, 50,000 employees uh, uh, representing 30 different nationalities. They're not around anymore, and, and they're looking for work. Mm, that is interesting, and that leads on to the issue of what happens to these workers. Now, a lot of these workers come from uh, South Asia, from across other parts of Asia. Uh, what's going to happen to them? Well, the first thing I want you to do is, everyone at home, write down the following name of a business, the Alma Bani Group. That's a construction firm in Saudi Arabia. And guess who owns it? Young Prince Salman and his little clan of, fr of friends. Uh, right now, uh, some of those workers will probably be going over to Alma Bani. But there may be uh, an overabundance of, um, uh, of Hariri's people. Now, according to kingdom law, uh, these workers are supposed to be compensated by the uh, Saudi Ministry of, of Labor. Uh, but the Ministry of Labor so far has not done that, and uh, it doesn't look like they actually are going to do that. So if these workers are not absorbed... Right. Um, right. They're going to be lost in space. Right. Craig Peters in Paris. Thank you ever so much.